You. You got an appointment? Oh man, I couldn't even walk past her, huh? Appointment. Uh, hello, I need to speak with Cedric. Yeah, that's why you're here. Appointment? Can I make an appointment for right now? Hmm. Huh. Not entirely out of the question. Convince me. I have to convince you? What the hell? Um, I could put in a good word with Cedric about his incredibly helpful secretary. You wouldn't mind a new bolter pistol. I've yeah. fired mine so many times the tips nearly fell off. Let's give Mr. Kincannon a ring. Thank you. Mr. Kincannon, got a person of interest here to see you. Maybe they've got business. That sounds like our inspector. Please, send her up. Yes, all right. What? This is his office? Okay. Yo, he has a nice gun collection. Huh. Why, if it isn't the inspector, I was hoping you'd swing by. Here for my alibi, I assume. Later. First, I want an explanation for that nonsense outside. Another murder? Mm -hmm. Drunk Raptidons, mm -hmm. Black Hole Birdie practicing his hacking in the middle of the street. Uh, stop me if it's one of those, or I'll just keep guessing. I had a run-in with some slug agents. Sounds as though you've already sorted it out yourself. How did thugs get their hands on slug gear? Slug uniforms do seem to go missing from the hotel laundry with impressive regularity. Easy enough for someone to nick a few. Now ask yourself this. Why would anyone give thugs slug gear and send them after you? Okay, well... Somebody out there is trying to smear your good name. Well, to smear my name, anyway. But I can't fathom who would benefit from tarnishing my reputation like that. Can you? Hmm. Damn, this Cedric guy is low-key an asshole. If you have a theory, spit it out. Oh, that's good. That's very good, Inspector. I like this. Dominant. Aggressive. Hmm? The woman in charge. I don't want to accuse anyone without hard evidence. Though it may be worth noting, Ludovico has motivation in spades. So, as you've deduced, I did not send anyone from Slug after you. Nor is it likely they assign themselves that task. Still, I am sorry for the trouble, Inspector. When well, that's settled, I assume you'll want to know where I was the night of Helen's murder. <laughs> Damn right I do. Let's see. That night, I was... Ah, torturing Elliot Nasser for information on missing cargo. That was a messy one. Didn't break until nearly noon the next day. Can you imagine? And where would I find Elliot Nasse to verify that? An excellent question. I had his body dropped off the edge of the land complex. I'm not sure what happened to it from there, scientifically speaking. Maybe it dissolved? Ultimately, though, it doesn't matter. You'd be a fool to believe me, regardless of what I told you. People lie, and I am, incriminatingly, people. Yeah, he's annoying me, and he definitely has a punchable face. So your alibi is that you were busy murdering someone else. Which, as I said, you should not trust. If it helps, however, you might consider pursuing not my means, but my motive. Why in the name of the architect would I kill Halcyon Helen? She was making me a fortune. So Halcyon's death is a net loss for Slug. I'm considering a line of commemorative merchandise. Still, that's nothing compared to what Helen would have made us in the long run. I'd offer to assist you in your work, but I have a mystery of my own to solve, I'm afraid. I 
I take it the guy you tortured wasn't the source of your missing cargo, then? Oh, Elliot stole from me, all right. Alas, you're right in that his was a singular isolated incident, and as such, does not resolve a concerning broader trend. Items are disappearing from slug storage and processing warehouse. The thefts began a week before Helen's unfortunate death, and there have been more instances since. <laughs> before you ask, I know the difference between cargo going missing and cargo going missing. This is the latter. What's gone missing specifically? <laughs> nothing unsavory, and nothing Ludovico shouldn't know about, if that's your concern. I'm quite serious when I say Slug is a legitimate business. As to the specifics, I'm not sure. The warehouse foreman should be able to tell you. <laughs> Before you ask, I know the difference between cargo going missing and cargo going missing. This is the latter. Why are you repeating that line specifically again? What's the connection to Helen's murder? I'm not sure. I'm only confident there is one. That the thefts began mere days before Helen's untimely demise is an extraordinary coincidence. I'm not a man who believes in happenstance, Inspector. I do not trust it. Huh. I don't know what that means, but it's clearly a fool's errand arguing with you. <laughs> Do tell Ludovico when you get a chance, please. It's astonishing how long it's taking him to have that same epiphany. Regardless, this will be fun. You out in the field, chasing down leads. Me, scheming in my office, preparing to unspeakably mangle the perpetrator. <laughs> Yeah, this guy is a jerk. I really can't stand his holier than that attitude. I'll say this once. Whoever's behind this is going to jail. Not to you. You do recall, Inspector, that I'm not to be trusted? But certainly, whatever you say. You'll want to speak with Ella Tinsley, the warehouse foreman. I've cleared her as a suspect myself, but should she refuse to cooperate, shoot her. No, I'm joking. If she won't cooperate, tell me and I will shoot her. And do feel free to search my office for clues while you're here. Don't hold back on my account. Before I get started... Was there something else you wanted to discuss? The constable's dead. Constable Keen? Now that is a damn shame. Am I right to think this wasn't a workplace accident? It was, let me see, what's the other options? This was murder, all right. It seems murder is becoming an unsettling trend on Eridanos as of late. Thank you for informing me of Constable Keen's passing. When you find her killer, please be certain to make them suffer. Did you know the constable well? Would it surprise you to hear that, despite being on opposite sides of the law, we were friends? That her loss comes as a sudden blow. Maria was a decent soul. And law knows those are in short supply around here. A little square, perhaps, <laughs> in her dedication to the rules, but good nonetheless. I'm also saddened to have lost an occasional drinking buddy. She was quite good at cards, you know. I'm sorry, Constable Keen. She didn't no, serve this. She didn't. But let's discuss something else. Do you have other matters requiring my attention? I have more questions about Helen. Very well. Did you have many dealings with Helen? A few. Helen was strangely curious about the private business operations around Eridanos. She said it was role research. But how much business know-how does one actor truly need for an action picture? I also arranged to have Helen supplied with magpix, bypass shunts, and other hacking tools. She wanted to buy in bulk. Why did you... wait, that didn't strike you as suspicious? That she bought in bulk? Not particularly. It takes time to learn to use tools like that deftly. I wonder, did she run out of time in the end? You know more than you're telling me. I might. 
I just might. Your point, Inspector? It's not a good look for a murder suspect. Am I an official suspect, then? <laughs> Intriguing. I'll look forward to how it all plays out. Be very careful, Inspector. I'd very much like to see you still around for the grand finale. Whenever it comes, whatever shape it takes. If you didn't kill her, any idea on who would want her dead? That is the question, isn't it, Inspector? Tell me, do you really believe Helen's death was a mere crime of passion? Or one of petty career jealousy? Hmm? I'm not willing to rule anything out yet. A smart approach, Inspector. And yet, this murder is bigger than Miss Helen's personal life. Bigger than her latest moving picture. I'm listening. Her actions in the time leading up to her death do not align with those of an actor on Eridanos solely to promote Spectrum Brown. Stay sharp, Inspector. Now is not the time to lose focus. Because whoever did kill Helen is not going to come forward so easily. That's all I wanted to know. One moment, if you please, Inspector. I've answered your questions. I believe it's my turn to ask you a question now. What, or who, made you decide to investigate me? I can't tell you that. A woman of discretion. Disappointing, but admirable. Now then, did you need anything else? Why does Ludovico hate you so much, anyway? The original incident? Well, I made him an offer he should have refused. And now he regrets doing business with you. An excellent deduction, Inspector. Our combative relationship stems from paperwork, mundanely enough. Rizzo's contracted sublight to construct the Eridanos atmospheric complex. Had Lou wanted Rizzo's to retain full control of Eridanos, he shouldn't have skimmed the revised contract I sent him. Lou's an administrator, for law's sake. I thought he would adore all the fine print I added. Hmm, that is so funny. That can't be it, can it? My power grab, as Lou called it, planted the seed of hatred. And Lou, obsessed with what should have been, has made sure to water it daily with his bitterness and anger. Nurturing a grudge is an ugly thing. You should make peace with him. Alas, I can't. I am, first and foremost, the head of Slug, and it simply wouldn't be good for business. Slug's control of Eridanos is a crucial step in my long-term plans for Sublight. The board needs to see irrefutable proof we are a respectable, legitimate business. Why do you care so much what the board thinks? Because one day soon, Sublight will obtain a seat on it. Meanwhile, our dear administrator is still laser-focused on old Slice, which can be a nuisance. He's grown increasingly desperate to catch Slug with our hand in the proverbial cookie jar as of late, convinced we're involved in less-than-legal business opportunities. Murder had better not be one of those opportunities. Continue investigating, Inspector. I'm afraid you'll find both you and Ludovico will be disappointed in that regard. Excuse me. And then as far as looking for any proof... Huh. This copy of TK contains 142 fewer pages than a standard copy. The missing pages were likely removed to create sufficient space for the hidden listening device inside. Short-range transmission capabilities. The receiver must be somewhere nearby. You figured that out just by looking at it? Huh. We ought to talk shop one of these days. Inspector, please consider speaking into the device in order to trace the transmission and reveal the receiver's location. Whoever's listening, I'm coming for you. Ominous threat transmitted. Transmission analysis complete. While the precise location of the receiver could not be pinpointed, it has been narrowed down to a smaller, approximate range. How long has this been here? Analysis inconclusive. 
However, there is a minor accumulation of dust particles present on the book's uppermost surface. Okay, so let's examine the dust. 98.3% of the dust particles are less than 500 micrometers in diameter. Oh, okay, thanks. This unit is glad to have been of service, Inspector. Examine the surrounding area. The area within a 0 0.5 meter radius of the book possesses a dust coating comprised of at least twice the number of particles. It's not very dusty then, must have been placed fairly recently. That is highly likely, Inspector. Conclude examination. What's that you found? No, wait, don't tell me. Let's save it for the big reveal once you've solved the case. Hmm. This guy, I think he low key enjoys this whole thing. It's sad. A cursory fingerprint analysis shows this display case was recently opened or closed. That gun on the bottom looks special. Has it been customized? Confirmed. The grip has been modified for a specific wielder, most likely the rifle's owner. Additionally, the plasma rifle sights appear to have been realigned to better accommodate a shooter with slight myopia in one eye. Analyze the fingerprints further. The fingerprints belong to Cedric and Cannon. Just making sure. Conclude examination. Oh, admiring my rifle. Had it custom fitted by a woman on Monarch. Okay, I don't see anything else. Then again, there is the kitchen and shower area as well, which I don't see anything else. All right, well, time to go. The receiver location is right in this spot here. In the bathroom? Timeline discrepancy detected. Nearby. Transmission endpoint discovered. The receiver in this book matches the transmitter to the listening device found in Cedric's office. It's somewhat grime covered. Any clues as to who put it here? Due to the high level of foot traffic in this area, this unit is unable to determine who placed the device. Ew, how long has this been in the ground? Based on the accumulated mix of sludge and detritus, the receiver has been present since approximately a week before Helen's death. Ew, I just took it. This is... Ugh, Lord. Okay, so it was in a public restroom for like a good while. Let's go ahead and talk to the foreman. Um, restrict access. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought I wasn't able to see him at first. Um, all right, let's go. Okay, so I'm in the office and I need to talk to the foreman. Hi there. Sorry, this area is off limits to port vision. Oh, wait half a second. You're the inspector. Yes, I am. Sorry about that. I'll buzz you right in. Thank you. Appreciate that. Feel free to have a look around, ma'am. Really? Just like hey, that. Hey, think they keep any spare parts down here? Just wondering. He just let me in without any hesitation. Should I be concerned? Are they really expecting me? Like, I don't know. This place is pretty huge, though. Hopefully, the guy that I'm talking to isn't as cryptid as the other one. That. That other guy annoyed the shit out of me. Oh. You're the inspector, aren't you? Yeah. Baskin Cannon said you'd be by about the cargo that's been going missing. Gosh, this is so neat. A real life inspector. What's that like? Have you solved any mysteries yet? Ever had to shoot a suspect? 
Uh, well, why don't we focus on stopping those cargo thieves? Right, of course. Just tell me how I can help. What's the culprit been stealing? That's the weird part. There's no pattern, far as I can tell. But thefts don't make sense. I ask you, who would steal a handful of Spacer's Choice Sabers so dull they can barely cut mud, but leave the spectrum black? Ugh. Who'd be desperate enough to want to steal a Spacer's Choice Saber, full stop? Sounds like our perp's not fencing the stone good. Yeah, probably not. No one's dumb enough to think Spacer's Choice Sabers are worth half a damn. Then there's the most recent theft. Five boxes of pens and a couple of sodas. I can't decide which one's sadder. I see what you mean about there not being a pattern. Well, I'm no inspector. If there is one, I'm sure you'll find it. Who has access to the cargo? Everyone here at Freight Storage and Processing, for a start. Thing is, the cargo is going missing before the shipments even get to the warehouse. Best I can figure, it's probably getting lost in the shipping yard. As for who has access there, Benton Chan, he's the shipping yard manager. He told me it's mainly just the loading automechs that handle cargo. Good. Could Benton have anything to do with it? Nah, Benton's too lazy for crime. The extra work would kill him. Last time I asked him to check the Automex, the whole head told me he couldn't help because he was dead. Is he dead? Brain dead, maybe. But no, no. My point is that if you think the Automex are a lead, you'll have to check on them yourself. Hopefully, you're mechanically inclined. Any idea why someone would want to bug Cedric's office? Maybe they're keen on cashing out and want to go as painfully as possible. I don't know. Boskin Cannon's office is where he holds most of his meetings with important folks like Miss Helen. Just about all negotiations happen in his office, too. Vendor pricing, major purchase orders, rentals for construction projects, you name it. That's enough for now. Oh, before I forget, I figured you might want to access my terminal, so I had a spare key card made. It's all yours. Anything on there I should know about? Oh no. I forgot to delete all of those incriminating messages I sent about which cargo to steal. <laughs> nah. I do have a list of cargo that's gone missing, though, if that helps any. I appreciate it. You're pretty perky and quirky and sarta sarcastically funny all right so let's go to the mechanicals and see exactly who is low-key stealing and i know they're stealing random shit so it's nothing that this thief is particularly looking for but it's still weird Inspector, this loading auto mechanicals programming does not match factory default settings. The standard defensive protocol has been modified to include an additional trigger. Uh, define standard defensive protocol. For type K-19 cargo transport auto mechanicals, defensive protocol is triggered by attempted interference with cargo or its transportation, or attempted destruction of the unit. Once triggered, defensive protocol targets the perpetrator and applies lethal force until the target has been deceased for a minimum of three minutes. Identify the new trigger. There is a directive in place to initiate defensive protocol should an unsanctioned data log installed in this auto-mechanical be removed. Scan for signs of unusual behavior. Slug auto-mechanical maintenance records indicate this particular unit is frequently reported as out of position or missing for periods of time. Let's have a look inside this auto mech. Loading auto mechanical unit K14 is fully operational at 99% power. Please designate the cargo to be transported and its destination. How can this auto mechanical assist you? 
Pravati, think you could disable the failsafe? You got it, Cap. Failsafe successfully disabled. Kill mode deactivated. Thank God. Whoo, shit. Okay, so view the most recently added dialogue. Ejecting data log 17C. Review the most recently added dialogue. Okay, so it looks like this alt mech has instructions to skim random cargo every one to four days. What was in shipment 6875? Apologies. This unit does not have access to cargo inventory lists. Conclude investigation. Unit entering standby mode. Have a nice day. So, yeah, this cargo mechanic was hacked. So that makes sense as to why there's random stealings in the cargo area. Because this machine was this designated. Seems real busy. I wonder if they're trying to compete with the Groundbreaker. I definitely want to go see the Groundbreaker one of these days. But yeah, it looks like it makes sense as to why the cargo has been randomly stolen because it's only programmed to look at it every one to four days inspector to what do i owe the pleasure i've solved your cargo skimming issue oh i love this part the big reveal so tell me what happened you've got a serious security problem what makes you say that Somebody bypassed the loading mech security system and rewired them to skim random goods. Damn, you're good. Hacking the Automex. So that was our skimmer's game. But why? Everything that was stolen has seemed random. I certainly see no pattern. The thief was random, except for a single shipment. So... Our culprit had something specific they wished to acquire and used the random theft as a smokescreen. I must say, Inspector, you've done excellent work on this case. Then that just leaves how the culprit knew where their true target would be, or indeed, that slug would soon possess it. Found this receiver. Oh, sorry, I'm not gonna sell it, my bad. Hand over the receiver. Okay. I found this. Am I right to think what you found in my office earlier was the other half of this listening device? Sure was, and whoever this device belongs to, that's our culprit. Not quite, Inspector. That listening device belongs to me. I lent it to Halcyon Helen to assist her with role research. Hmm. And she used it to research slug shipments instead. Unbelievable. I helped her. Gave her whatever she needed. I thought we were doing each other a good turn. Corporate sabotage, perhaps? I can't begin to guess at her motive. If it was to spit in my face, she'd be pleased to know she succeeded. This is a betrayal, Inspector. I do not take betrayal lightly. Helen should consider herself very lucky indeed that she is already among the dead. And that some other bastard beat me to putting her in the ground. Seems we found your motive, Cedric. Yes, I suppose we have. There is, however, a slight chronological incongruency to it. I now have a motive to kill Halcyon Helen, but Halcyon Helen is already dead. If I'd known Helen was stealing from me, I may very well have killed her, or had her killed. Alas, I did not. Or maybe you did know, and this is all I show for my benefit. Oh, that is good, Inspector. Now you are thinking in the manner you must, if you intend to get to the bottom of this mess. I wish you luck with your investigation, though I doubt you'll need it. You'll find Helen's murderer. I'm confident of that. Now, 
If you'll excuse me, I must find a way to excise my anger that minimally damages my business empire. I expect it will involve shooting quite a lot of guns. Thank you for watching this episode. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.